Got an order going north. It's a double order for 1191, 27 minutes. 2.8 miles, kind of far, but beggars can't be choosers. Let's do it. Hello. I have a pickup for two people, Daniel and Constantine. Constantine. You guys been getting a lot of um, online orders. It's been slow for us. Cool, so we're able to get those two orders from the same spot. Now we're going up north. One is West 27th, the other one is West 35th. So in this instance, I'm riding right behind the car because not a lot of room on this. Well, you can probably get on the side. Just gotta watch out a lot of people pulling out. Opening doors, you don't wanna get doored. You turn left onto West 27th Street. Tend to speed up on these streets because not running any bike lanes. It's a big open section, cars go really fast. Will be on the right. Says I was going about 30 right there. Uh, hi, is this 537? 537. 537? Yeah. Awesome, thank you. Just wanna, I'm just gonna ring them real quick. Appreciate it. Uh, food delivery. Yep. All right. Thank you. Sometimes these merchants, they don't put like a sticker on there to tell you what the name is for the person. So in this instance, as you can see, I'm looking at what this person has and uh, says that they got an energy drink, an air box box. I know one of them is toilet paper, so it's not that one. So I just give them the right one. So I just delivered that one going to 35th Street right now. As you can see here on the details, because it doesn't have a name on the, on the items on, in the box or whatever. So you can see here, this one says toilet tissue. And I know this one has toilet tissue in it, so I know which one to give the customer. So I know I'm giving it to the right person, basically. So I don't know what DoorDash, man. See, p people have a thing with tr trusting these apps. Like they have trust issues with these apps. And uh, a lot of that is cause transparency, like DoorDash isn't transparent, very transparent compared to the other apps in my opinion. Like they won't tell you certain things before they do it. Like they've lowered base pay before, like recently they've lowered base pay without telling anybody, like they just did it. I think one time before they said it, before this one, but, but this time when they lowered the base pay, they just didn't tell anybody. So that's like one example. But anyway, I bring that up because, I bring that up because I don't even think, I'm not even sure if I've got an order yet from DoorDash and I've been out here almost two and a half hours. So, I mean, I got like a 4.87 rating out of five, but my acceptance rate is really low and my completion rate is like 82% and you don't want to get lower than 80. So it just makes you wonder, like, it's like, are they doing favoritism? Are they choosing quote unquote top dashers? You know, people that accept every order that's like higher than 90% acceptance rate. <laughs> And uh, anyone that does that, like more than likely, they're not making what someone who's doing multi-apping does. You know, if you were to accept every order from DoorDash, you would not be getting paid well, unless your market's really, really good, which I'm in Manhattan. I mean, it's one of the best markets in the, the States. And if I was to have DoorDash right now, I'd be making zero money. So multi-apping is essential, but that's the thing. You don't know if, um, how transparent they are. Are they holding orders back from me? Cause it's been two and a half hours and I'm in one of the busiest markets. Like what the fuck? You just don't know.
Yeah, so I don't know what happened there, but once again, camera went out. Batteries are good, 56% on this battery, so I just basically pulled it out, put it back in, and it's working again, but I'm gonna quit talking about this damn GoPro, because <laughs> how much more do I gotta talk about this thing? Is it gonna just keep shutting off on me, or what? Well, I try to avoid Midtown, just packed all the time, especially now. It's still rush hour, 6.42. It's just packed cars. However, it'd probably be pretty good like during lunch peak because it uh, probably was better in the past because everyone would be in offices uh, and stuff, would be in offices and like ordering food. But it's still pretty, it's probably still better up here during lunch peak. I don't come out during lunch peak that much though because I'm like more nocturnal, unfortunately. <laughs> That's just how I roll lately. But uh, it would be good to be up here during lunch peak, I think. Holy shit, I got a Grubhub order. It's amazing. 2.1 miles for 8.28. Fuck it, dude, I'm just gonna take it. And if I get anything better, I'll just fucking take that. I mean, what the hell, you know? Dude, that's 27 minutes though. Mm. Nah, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna take that, man. 27 minutes, that's too long, dude. I could probably get, <laughs> I could probably get another order by that time <laughs> right now. 27 minutes for that, that's too, too far, bro. Uh, so we got one for 3.4 miles, 12.92. It is picking up a little bit, but I'm gonna take it anyway. And also uh, I switched to my iPhone because my, uh, <clears throat> my Android was getting pretty low on battery. So I'm just letting that charge up a little bit. But because I'm on my iPhone, you're not going to get any um, live recording screenshots. I'll probably just post some screenshots, like uh, still images of the orders and stuff like that for a little bit. All right, going to, uh, going to the pickup right now. So this is um, a double order with Uber, by the way. Picking up the first order right now. So I just picked that up. It's about two minutes till the next one. Your destination is on the left. Pick up for Kai. Thank you. Cool, so it's about 10 minutes south and financial district for the drop off. First drop off, uh, second drop off is I can't remember, I think it's really close by there though. So I gotta be careful right now because it's really windy. And EUCs, they get blown around pretty pretty and it pretty easily and it's not as safe in my opinion as if you're on two wheels like a bike so you got to be in my personal opinion you got to be a little bit more careful so i i don't go as fast i'm a little bit more cautious when, it, when it's windy out and the further you get down here the more windy it gets the more you get to the south of the peninsula the windiest area in Manhattan has to be not really the south though, it's more towards uh, 34th if you go towards the west on the west end. Around 10th Street, around, um, I forgot what it's called. There's like this sculpture area, it starts with a V. But anyway, around that area on 10th Street, where the CNN headquarters are, that, that little avenue right there is like, I call it 
wind tunnel, like wind street. That's just what I call it. Because every time I go on there, it's like a freaking hurricane. And when it's windy, I mean, it literally blow you like crazy over there. Like your bag be flying up and everything. Let's do something with like the, like the way the buildings are set up or something. And it just makes a wind tunnel, I think. Coming down, gonna meet me. I literally just did like a couple blocks around because I was following the Google Maps. I could have just took a right. Oh well. Cool, so I got one that's literally like walking distance away. Uh, it's on the other side of the street. I think it's right over here actually. Yep, right here. This is one of these places I gotta go from a different entrance, so I gotta actually go straight down to the left. Can't go through the front, I guess. Kind of pain in the ass, but what are you gonna do? Of course, there's fucking traffic on. Ugh. Just trying to make it a street over, that's it. I go through this ghetto ass entrance. Uh, I have a food delivery for. All right. 